Hello everybody out there and welcome to a new episode of That Crypto Show. Today in an interview edition. Uh, again, as always, we want to bring relevant uh, traders and market participants to you to share their story uh, with you, how they became professional traders. And today I'm joined by Alexander Duedari. Alexander, welcome to That Crypto Show. Hi Derek, Good to call see me you. Alex. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Alex, Good okay. To be here. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Oh, you're welcome. And um, I think this is an interview I was personally looking forward to uh, very, very much because I think uh, Alex uh, shares a story or the story of his life that many of you probably can relate to. He is really uh, one of those people that went from uh, bankruptcy to uh, becoming a multimillionaire. It sounds so corny, so cheesy, right? Um... But um, in, in, in a nutshell, it's literally what, what uh, my life story is all about. So um, I, I started off actually having nothing to do with financial markets at all. And, um, you know, like, like I guess everybody that, that in this day and age, there's a lot of more people that are interested in markets. And obviously the access to trading and all of these things have grown um, exponentially over the years. Uh, you know, like when... when um, I started. There was no no apps, no easy, you know, um, getting getting started in any of that. So, but I've always been very interested in financial markets. Even though in the beginning of my career, I was basically a music producer. So I was doing music. I'm from Berlin in Germany. Um, uh, I come from a let's just say a, a normal household. My parents are immigrants, so we've always had this um, this ambition of more. You know, you sort of gotta have that when you leave a country to live in another, anyway, right? Um, and uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, but I was more focused on on art and music, and especially when you're from Berlin in that age, um, it was more you couldn't make money really with music too much. It was really more about living your 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 true self or whatever you know whatever word you may want to choose here. Um, but um, being real basically was always something very important not play a role not just fake it till you make it kind of um, let's call it a culture that has grown a lot as well so um so this is why and I, I made a little money with with uh, music and then but I wanted to dabble with uh, um, investing right and uh, so I started a little bit myself I started to educate myself again it wasn't so easy to get access to education or other people or any of that you you know it was very very difficult to be honest you know and uh, um, what happened is that I I used my savings of I think about like many 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 years basically everything I had and I um, trusted a another trader because somebody told me hey that trader he's great you know he's uh, you gotta um if you want to make money go with this guy i said okay uh, let's let's try this let's do this and um i was very naive i was very um i didn't understand a thing of what i was getting myself into and i think that's more or less also um a story that is being retold by by the peoples in the hundreds of thousands today you know they don't know exactly what they're getting themselves into and they get wrong impressions uh, told and look, so basically what happened to me is that that super trader lost all my money the same day and uh I was watching mm. this, um, the account dropping and I was uh, texting the guy uh, on Skype at the time, funny enough, and um, uh, about like, what's going on? Where are you? Look, the, the balance is going down. Is that normal? Trying to make sense of what's going on. Um, and until the, the account basically went to zero first day. So that was my first experience of losing all my life savings um, in a day. And... I wish that would have been the worst because it got even much worse from that from there. <laughs> <laughs> even worse, I mean, losing everything in one day—it's like light speed. Pretty already, much, you know? <laughs> pretty much. And uh, what didn't move at light speed was my learning curve, to be honest. Because what I did next was an even more stupider <laughs> decision. Um, the guy resurfaced the day after the trader and he told me like ah, i got had an accident with a motorcycle and um i everything's like uh, i couldn't be on top of the account and if i was there um everything would have went um, normally and good and if you bring more money then i can trade the money back and then i'll trade you some more and i will not charge you any fees you know so he basically um told me get more money in and then um triggered my greed saying 
ill that, hey, uh, I'll work for you for free, you know, um, in order to make it up to you. And again, stupid as I was, uh, I went to my parents and I um, asked them for money. And what they did is they cashed out their retirement fund, um, a sizable amount of money, around 100,000 euros or dollars, uh, euros at, at the time. And um, my own money, by the way, the savings were about 50,000. So it was really my whole life savings over many, 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 many years of savings. All right. Um, and uh, so what happened next is that I put the money in trading and um, again, and we, um, so my parents were actually friendly enough to trust me without really knowing what they were giving the money to. And they, they also put themselves not the smartest position, but they were supporting their child basically, right? So there's no, you can't, you can't blame them for that, obviously. Um, and so, and what happened next is that the the equity of the account went back to the um, making my losses back basically and then that was basically what i call my butterfly moment uh, butterfly effect moment because that one decision triggered the rest of my life basically what happened there is that um the trader asked me hey i made your money back should i close positions and i was like hey this guy made uh, 50 grand this afternoon or in two days. I really don't remember exactly, exactly if it was one day, but it was very, very fast. Like, I think it was one day. And I thought like, so the guy wasn't lying. He's great. You know, he's going to make me 50 grand a day now. And it's all milk and honey from here, right? <laughs> um, little did I know that we were heavily over leveraged. We got massively lucky, actually, that we were up. And that same night was an FOMC meeting. So... The next morning, and I told the trader, well, look, I mean, you'd know better. You made all this money now, and so I'll I'll trust your judgment. And he said, like, okay, leave it open. And um, next morning, I wake up, and the account was in a margin call. So I literally, again, lost everything. I think there was 3000 left or so of 150 or so. Um, and that moment was... I mean, I, um, it sounds overdramatic from today's perspective, but at that time I was ready to jump out of a window. Like I was, I didn't see any, mm -hmm. any way out from there anymore. You know, like I said, like, okay, I screwed up my own uh, stuff. I screwed up my parents' stuff. I can never talk to them again. I can never tell them what happened. I just need to, um, vanish <laughs> more or less. Um, mm -hmm. and that was a, a very, um, tough experience to be honest and um i got i wouldn't say lucky but um thankfully what it triggered in me was more of a okay i gotta do this by myself i gotta learn this i gotta against all odds i will die trying basically you know i'm already dead you know it, like basically there's there's no more downside mm. from here uh so um it took me like like literally, I thought a few days or so where I, I you couldn't talk to me. I couldn't. I, I, I was just in a state of shock. You know, I thought like this is this is the end, basically. But um, there's this beautiful German mm -hmm. saying, you don't eat as hot as you cook. And that's literally what was the situation here. Like after a few days, um, I sort of found out, OK, I do love my life more than <laughs> the situation. And um mm -hmm. Luckily. And I, I started to put all my efforts into um, something productive, learning how the financial markets work, how trading works. And um, at the time, I um, I tried a lot of different um, to do a lot of different things. And eventually, I got an, an internship at, a, at an investment bank out of Munich. And um, also the the. The lucky part here, or what was good timing, is that it happened at a phase of the market where, you know, today you come into established big companies, you can't, you can't learn too much. You know, you basically just go there, you are a little wheel in the whole structure of everything, um, you get replaced quickly, you don't really get to see the whole, um, how things really work. You don't, you know, you're just a piece of the puzzle and actually maybe they want you to stay fragmented and don't understand the whole thing um, um, to protect their, their own interests. But anyway, I don't want to go there too much. And But what happened is that, 
since that investment bank was um, um, starting to develop its derivatives desk, basically trading Forex, futures, options, CFDs, all of these things, uh, I got um, completely involved in that process from day one. So I learned everything. Where does liquidity come from? How, you know, what is uh, internalizing? Um, where, you know, how do these companies make money? Where does the price come from? Um and um, basically, we built the whole trading operation for the bank. And um, the most interesting part, despite um, or, or next to all the infrastructural things and how markets work and um, how everything behind the curtain works and everything like that, because today you just have like easy to use apps on top of the same things, right? Um, these things haven't changed too much other than it's still the same technology, more or less. So um, Bob, I had insights into many, many, many customers. And at that time, the the number of retail customers was very small compared to today. Also, there were no companies focused on retail customers. So today, there's, I would say, maybe 10,000 companies that all shoot for $100 account customers. Um, and um, at that time, a $10,000 customer was not someone you would talk to because it was too small. You know, so you only had larger customers in the bank. And still, 90% of those would lose. Yeah, don't make no mistake. Don't think just because people have money, they can make wiser investment choices. That wasn't what I what I witnessed. But there was a small percentage that was making money. And this is where my journey into trading became more interesting because um, because I was a very committed person at the bank. I everybody basically loved me. I would go beyond, um, over and beyond to serve to provide the best service, best liquidity, tightest spreads, uh, uh, good leverage. Um, you know, fast in and out withdrawals. All these things that are today all automated. At that time, it needed someone to do it. You know, uh, and I was basically mm -hmm. everything from sales to business development to cleaning lady. You name it, I was everything. You know, and that's why I had. A great and and really close relationship with um all with most customers and especially those that were successful and you know i had customers that um at times would make six figures in seconds trading over news yeah and i was and i was baffled like wait a minute this guy just made so much money i would dream to ever have in my life in seconds like how is that possible even um so I asked, <laughs> so can you tell me more about what you do there? Um, uh, any chance I, I can learn it from you? Um, what can I, you know, um, what can I offer from my side to help you make more money uh, so that you can help me understand more? Um, that's basically how it happens. So I would bring them more liquidity, more possibilities to place their strategies. And in return, I would learn about their strategies and, um, uh, again, it took me a number of years to catch up on on many learnings and also on, let's just say, different uh, trading and investment styles. And even today, I would say that in the big picture of things, there are not a hundred different working strategies. Uh, there's maybe a handful or maybe 10, let's just say, probably it's a little bit more. But And within those, there's obviously endless variations. But there's not an endless amount of ways to make successful uh, trading results. Um and so, so this is what I then learned more and more and more and more and more. And then I wanted to, you know, um, get more involved in the asset management side of things. I, because what I noticed is that most of these, even the bank I was working for, banks, providers, brokerages, they mostly live when they're like, um, let's just say an extremely fair business, they live from the spread alone. When they're more retail oriented, they live from the, the netting and internalizing of their flow. Well, I'll just put it in a very descriptive way like that. Um, and um, so, and I, I, I didn't want to take money from the customers. I wanted to take money from the market. That was my, my, what I, what I came to do, you know? Um, and so I didn't get involved into the Forex industry in terms of, um, you know, building affiliate networks and, um, and all of these things, but I got more involved into asset management, into creating return, into generating money from the market. And um, 
I joined uh, or I worked with a Swiss um, hedge fund or asset management company, um, and um, we really had some some um, uh, yeah we could call it what it is like some stellar results. We in fact um, uh, won um, I had won an investment award together at the time with the best macro manager from Hedge Week in New York. We went to a banquet over there and like, you know, it was really um, super fancy, you know, like these super rich people and everything. Um, mm -hmm. But here then the next smack in the face happened. You know, you already think you're on top of the world. Everything's great. You're making money. You're making other people money. You're doing what you always dreamed of. You achieved the unachievable, you know, fantastic. And um, I was sitting in at one of these these um, um, when we uh, award ceremony, um, uh, yeah, when, when we received the award, and next to me was sitting a very very rich uh, asset manager. They they were like a huge company with like hundreds of millions, if not billions, under mm -hmm. ass, uh, on assets under management. And he looked at me and said, hey, "Boy, what do you do?" <laughs> I'm like, "Hey, we we trade this." And at the time, we were focused mainly on trading FX, meaning foreign exchange currencies. So I told them what we were doing and that we're actually going to receive an award tonight and we're up 40% on the year. It was April also. Um, and then I asked him, hey, um, uh, would you have interest to know more about it? And he would just say, no, thanks, I'm not. And I was baffled. Like, like, why? Like, old man, do you, don't you understand what's going on here? We're, we're, we're the, <laughs> the kings of the world, man. Like, what's wrong with you? And he said, like, dude, if you make that, oh, he didn't say dude, but you know, <laughs> uh, he said, like, if you make that kind of return and this speed, um, you either have constraints scalability wise, or you have a very high risk you're taking. And I, and blinded as I was, I didn't want to hear that. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and um, he was right that uh, at some point we had um, someone else in the trading team that literally did that. He didn't follow the risk management rules. Um, over leverage the account overnight and you know uh, things happen when you do that no good things so um so that's why i i again then left that company because i um um and uh, that was a risk i i wasn't prepared to 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 continue to take right um i kept uh, most uh, and a lot of my relationships with with um, investors that we were working with but i went more or less uh private, I would say, you know, like managing my own funds. And, um, you know, I, I had my first child or better, my wife had our first child. Uh, and um, so so I took life a little bit more in that direction. But I was always and um, trading, you know, um, um, any day of the week, basically, or um, or working with other successful traders. I think that was my biggest strength that I, I always kept my network going and always um, worked with people that had an um, either it was a technology edge or an information edge or an experience edge in what they were doing. And I, and I um, um, put my efforts together with them. And um, that's how I continue to evolve. And I think that's the biggest takeaway here is that markets change, dynamics change, um, details of strategies change. Um, so, but the, the biggest constant is change, you know, and so you have to be adaptable and, um, I do think that even though it sounds like, uh, you know, um, a little bit cheesy, but um, it, when you fail, you, you, you can fail forward. You can work your way back up. However, the most important differentiation I would like to make here is that when you fail with something, you need to figure out what caused that failure and don't do it again. Because repeating, um, you know, like Albert Einstein said, right, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is the definition of insanity. And that's the uh, and that's so, so that, that's also things that um, th that saying is one of the ones that remained most in my mind. And also when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So the way the perspective you look at mm. things, the, the understanding you bring to the table to something um, influences what you're actually seeing uh, and how you're seeing it and how you can act with it. So I would definitely recommend anyone to um you know, first of all, before you 
um, don't treat trading like betting, you know, and that's, I think, the biggest uh, differentiation to make because a lot of people just treat it like that. And um, be, I mean, feel free. You want to gamble, be, be, be my guest. You know, it's your choice, obviously, and the brokers will happily take your donation. So that, that's totally fine. Uh, uh, and again, I'm not trying to badmouth this or anyway, but that's not trading, guys. You know, that's gambling using financial instruments or financial underlying prices, not even the real underlying. So you're not trading the real um, asset. Usually, most of the time. Uh, yeah, and then obviously, you know, you get into um, digital assets as well. I That's also actually funny. I was offered Bitcoin in 2011. And at the time, I was so focused on learning uh, trading and effects and things like that, that because the guy who offered me Bitcoin, he would bring customers to me. And he said, like, hey, I have this thing, Bitcoin, mm. you want to have a look? I said, like, no, 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 just bring me your customers. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so funny you know when, when it comes to cryptocurrencies or especially bitcoin everybody has a story like this yeah mine is always like when when i was working in singapore 2014 on my way to work there was this bitcoin wow. atm and being you know the uptight banking right. guy i was back then i i went by it and always thought like who's so dumb and buy stuff like this that joke is on me. It took me another three years to go yeah. down the rabbit hole and, as well. Um, um, I think uh, Michael Saylor had, has put it in a very funny statement. Everybody buys Bitcoin at the price he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, that, even actually. though I wouldn't bet the farm on it like he did. Like he's, he's obviously, um, he's showcasing his conviction very strongly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, yeah, like, I, I think DeFi is a very interesting space. Uh, unfortunately, it got festered and, and captured by by scam, mm. you know. Um, and that's uh, it reminds me of the early FX days. You know, in the early FX days, you had a lot of unregulated stuff going on, very a lot of funny business, a lot of money vanishing. Um, and um, so I'm not 100% sure if regulation is really the solution because... Uh, many times regulation overregulates and makes something that is really valuable only accessible to people that already have money. Um, but uh, education is the way, in my opinion. And uh, that's why also I spent uh, mm. a good amount of my time over the last, yeah, I would say seven, eight years with educating people, you know. And I think that, that that's how we met actually as well, right? Um, initially so um and um I, I i do think that there is still a huge gap in in education and information i also think that a lot of the standard education that is um, put out there is incomplete and it's convenient because um mm. let's just take uh, technical analysis for example as a um, as a topic you know what i always say is that technical analysis is a one-dimensional solution for a multi-dimensional challenge so can uh, technical analysis help you with making better uh, trading choices investment choices absolutely but is that going to make you successful by itself in my opinion absolutely not um because there's much other dynamics also at play also depends greatly on what you're actually trying to do <laughs> but um also, you, you need to understand that when you're in the market, it's a it's a you versus somebody else. So if you trade a support or resistance that everybody is looking at, like there's someone smarter out there who's playing you guys into that level, you know, and uh, and that's also something that I learned a lot more on the bank side on on the, the hedge fund side is that these guys. They, they, they have more systematic approaches, meaning a lot more rules-based. And also, you know, they they corner the market from different sides. They will not only trade Forex as a CFD or as a spot, uh, but they may actually use different instruments to hedge themselves or even, yeah, I, I, they wouldn't say it like that, but even influence the market price in a way that will benefit them on, on another uh, matter, right? Or very simply stated, um, options traders use the spot or the futures market to hedge the hedge themselves, but by hedging themselves, they're actually influencing the price, <laughs> you know, and that that that, mm. that could play into the expiration levels they're actually looking for. So, it's a lot more of a mm -hmm. of a multi-dimensional aspects here at play that you need to realize and understand, in my opinion, if you want to be successful in in trading. Plus, you should always only trade something that has. A positive expectancy meaning you know if uh, otherwise if if mm. you know if you think it's a 50 50 it's not 
Um, because uh, first of all, 50-50 would be bad, but it's not 50-50 because you're already losing the spread when you execute a trade. So you're all, yeah. if you win 50-50, you're losing because you're paying the spread and commissions. Uh, and that's what also many people don't really understand. So my, my hope, my wish, and my what I'm actually actively work on is to educate people about all these um, all these dynamics, all these realities that are... Um, yeah, not necessarily um, brought to light in a. I look. I don't want to sound like a like a conspiracy theorist here because it's not. But hey, the guys that run these businesses, they have a great business going on. Like, why would they want anyone to spoil it, right? I mean, I totally get that. There's nothing mm-hmm. nothing bad per se, but uh, we then got into a culture of um, you know um, Lamborghini guys with trading signals for free and, 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 you know, Hey, you can have my signals for free. Just go to my broker and deposit your money there. All right. Um, look, I'm, I'm guilty of the charge of showing myself and fancy stuff because I enjoy it myself too. So I'm not going to pretend that, um, I'm mother Teresa, (laughs) but, um, those schemes are literally have been made in order to, um, to instill the impression that they made their money from financial market transactions. And that is what is not true yeah. because they made the money basically from the customers um, donating their money to the brokerages and then uh, getting paid for that. But mm. um, that's the business model of the industry per se. And again, I don't think it is bad by um, um, in, in like, like generally. I just think that there is a lack of education about it. People are should make their own choices. And again, I'm sure that even if the education level was two times, three times, ten times higher as it is now, there would still be millions of people that want to play and gamble, which, you know, fine. But what I, what I dislike is that notion of that people promise profits while knowing that there will never be any. That's something that really, you know, um, because I came from this moment of hurt where I wanted to take my own life, basically, more or less, um, ashamed to 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 the core of not even able to talk to my parents um, because of exactly such a thing. And um, that's why I probably am overreacting or sentimental about it, <laughs> emotional. Uh, but hey, that's my story. That's who I am. And that's what got me here. So um, again, I'll, I'll rather deal with acceptance and with with it instead of uh, not. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, I think I already talked too much, I guess. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's that's like. I mean, it's just great to listen to it because um, there's like. I, I think probably we yeah. could go on for hours now uh, because there's really so much stuff also in, ingrained in what you are saying. That uh, in the beginning, for example, that you have to stay true to yourself. That technical analysis is <laughs> very nice. I'm, I'm going to remember that one for the rest <laughs> of my life. I think a one-dimensional solution to a multi-dimensional yeah. problem, and it, it fits so well because that's always what I say. I mean, people. Um, on, on Telegram, in reaction to the videos, the, the, the traders I talk to on an everyday ba- basis, mm-hmm. or beginner traders, uh, aspiring traders, I like to call them, of course, I talk to uh, on a daily basis. Uh, usually, the, the one question they always ask is, hey, do you have an indicator uh, that's like the holy grail indicator? You know, that is always right, always shows me like what to do uh, and makes me money basically without sleeping. And I always say like, this is not how it works. You know, uh, trading is a business. It's not, you, like you said, you can gamble, of course, if this is what you uh, want to do. And a lot of the apps nowadays that are used for trading, they kind of encourage that, of course, as well, because they are designed in a way that gamifies right. trading uh, to a certain extent. Uh, but I, I always like to take the example, the economic situation we are in at the moment. Um, I think, <laughs> like uh, I, I said this in my live webinar last week as well, the release of US inflation data is like an uh, event that is affecting the market True. so heavily that you can basically throw any technical indi- indicator yeah, in the it, trash it will just, until the, the market normalizes The price will just again. go through it like a hot knife through butter. And um, yeah. about indicators, exactly. I actually have also a story if you want about that. <laughs> Cool. Uh, tell us, share with um, us, please. But uh, hold on, just just a second, uh, guys. If if you are watching this and you want to know more uh, about Alexander uh, uh, Alexander's story and who he is and what he can offer you also to help you to become a better trader, underneath the video you'll find, of course, all the links you. you need to dive deeper with Alexander into the rabbit right. hole that trading yeah. is. Uh, thank you. Um, ah, and it is what a rabbit hole it is indeed. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So talk, talk uh, you, yeah, you wanted to tell so, a story about um, it. It's actually also a story that you would believe to be true. You know, we I, I knew this um, one of the customers I had at the bank at the time was a was a trader from Switzerland. And um, he used to be like a real big shot in the 80s. Actually, he, he even had a Formula One uh, team and things of that. Like he he, he was really a, a big guy for some time. But then he had some issues with the government in Switzerland. He flew to the US and um, they brought him back. And then anyway, so and uh, somehow <laughs> he ended up being my customer. And um, he, he was, you know, I was again still young and and more naive and uh, and he uh, told me like his his background story and i was um i got attached to him as wanting to learn more from this guy because he had this this background and um he also brought like um good customers in the beginning some some real estate guys that deposited a lot of money that he would trade um and in the beginning it also looked quite promising and then um he started to develop trading strategy and he told me alex you know what we can team up um i can i can do all the trading uh, you can introduce some clients to me and things like that and then he uh, basically what he did is he took an obos indicator overbought oversold which is you know or cci like so really it's nothing fancy per se you know it's really just showing you when, when the price goes up um that it's at some point it's um it's overbought and when the price goes down it's oversold but he sort of changed a little bit the levels and and talked about it and and really made me believe that he built this magic indicator. And he said, like, you know, because of that, I'm always buying low and always selling high, always. And then what he ended up doing, so he was basically telling me that um, he would execute trades all the time and he would always freeze in basically or lock in a spread profit. But that wasn't true. Um, so... Uh, then at some point, what what happened is that we there, there was like sizable investment in his in his um, uh, strategy, and um, but he wouldn't really trade it, and that went on for maybe even two three months that he would trade a day and then not and say like ah guys I need to refine something, so it was a constant effort of talking to the customers, telling them um, yeah he's just improving everything, uh, just be a little bit patient. Um, the guy really knows what he's doing, um, and uh, again why because um, when you're naive and you're not experienced and educated yourself you believe just whatever somebody else says that's really the biggest thing that i would like to leave here in this in this call is that don't be that person guys be the one who understands be the one who learns be the ones who who has a firm opinion by him or herself you know and um what happened then is that after after it was either all the clients will just leave or he will need to start trading he started trading and he would buy um, and sell positions more or less every minute. And that went on for three days. And then he built up a, a leverage of, I don't know exactly uh, at the time, but it was thousands of lots. Okay. And, uh, uh, and then the market went against all that. Um, like, um, uh, and, um, literally basically our liquidity provider called us and said like, guys, what are you doing there? You have like massive exposure. Um, and then that was also shortly before some news. And, um, so, uh, he, it, and, and the, the portfolio lost a lot, you know, lost a lot. And then, um, he tried to close the positions and instead of closing one by one, he tried to push through very large orders. And um, then again, the liquidity provider called us and said, like, guys, um, and, and because the bridge technology at the time between MT4 and the real liquidity wasn't working well. And so some of these trades would not go through. And some of them would not show on the MT4 mm. that did actually go through on the liquidity side. So and then the liquidity provider called us and said, like, guys, you, you're pushing 500 lot orders here every minute. What, what are you doing? You know, we and. And then essentially our whole exposure or the whole exposure of his strategy turned from one side to another after losing more or less 80% of the portfolio. And then the market turned into the other side and depleted the rest. So he literally lost everything oh in that in that stupid thing using his super indicator. And, and guys, I have mm -hmm. seen these indicators, super EAs, super signals. I can't even count how many I've seen of them. Some of them never work. <laughs> Some of them are like what we call today shooting stars. They come, they shine bright, and they evaporate and burn down and crash down. Yeah. So um, there's no such 
um, messiah technology that's going to get you out of your misery. It's going to create misery for you if you if you just rely on it um, completely. That doesn't mean that you cannot and should not use indicators in order to solidify your trading decision. However, um, you cannot use an indicator sometimes like this, sometimes like that. It needs to be integrated in your total approach and you need to have a statistical reliability of when I look at that kind of pattern and the indicator shows that and uh, and like have an, a set of rules. Uh, I know that from thousands trade thousand trades that I investigated or researched over the time, um, eighty percent of these setups work out. Then it makes sense, you know. But if you if you don't have that, then it's just another another layer of gamble that mm. you can't control uh, and and that that's also not giving you any edge at all so it's it's literally just a waste of time it's gonna hurt you and take your money basically so that's my my indicator it, story it would be again the the one-dimensional solution to a multi-dimensional <laughs> yeah, yeah. problem i i just love that saying yeah <laughs> that, that's that's me. it's one of the biggest takeaways that's for it. me um and also mm. What I mean by statistical edge, you know, um, there's other strategies that more professionals play out uh, that are statistically um, going to play out if you do it over enough number of um, trades, you know, and uh, um, options markets are very interesting in that respect, for example, you know, um, the difference between uh, um, implied volatility and realized volatility. Now we're probably going a little bit overboard here um, for most um, FX and CFD traders, but, uh, you know, there are um, uh, statistical models that you can use to your advantage uh, and play them out without just gambling. And uh, because I can assure you, the real money out there doesn't gamble. Yeah. That is so true. Um, uh, I couldn't agree uh, more with you on that. Uh, all right. I, I think we slowly, <laughs> sadly, have to, have to come to, to an end. Um, it was an absolute pleasure having thank you here, you uh, Alex. Uh, thank you again for, for sharing your story and your, uh, your, your many, many insights into trading. I think really just by listening to you, um, people can already start avoiding all those you know, beginner so. mistakes everybody tends to do. And I, I don't know how many countless times I did that uh, until Same I here. finally understood, you know, that um, I'm responsible for my own money and for all my own luck. And it's a business Absolutely. and it's not gambling. Uh, but that's a story for another day. Uh, again, guys, if you are interested to know more about Alexander, check out the description of this video. You'll find everything you need in terms of links there. Also, remember to, uh, to leave us a like, subscribe to the channel and activate this awesome alarm bell there so you get notified about uh, new videos coming here. We're going to see each other very, very soon again. Take care, everybody out there. Always remember to use the stop loss. <laughs> Great. Take care. Thank you, Dirk. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Cheers.